let's start off here. Questions. Now, I happen to love questions. In fact, I love them so much I'm going to be asking questions as we go through here a little bit this evening. Uh, I love asking questions. And what I have noticed, now I've been doing my doctor's report like this for some 35 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and in doing this, I have noticed that every time I start a doctor's report, there is pretty much predominantly one question that people start the doctor's report with. So we'll, we'll handle that one right away. And that question is almost universally, what am I doing here? Why am I here on a Tuesday evening? We're doing slides. What is this all about? And I'll tell you, I do this and have done it this way for many years for one basic reason. I make an assumption. And the assumption is that anybody who walks through that door or any door I've ever had wants pretty much the same thing. Results. Pretty good assumption. I mean, I've never had anybody walk in here and say, Doc, I don't really care if I get results. I just like hanging around here. You guys are fun. I want to come in and throw some money at you. Drive all the way here. <laughs> no, no. That's a key. Now, there is an issue with this. And here's the issue. Chiropractic is a 50-50 deal. That means I do half the work. You do half the work. If you don't know your half, don't do your half, you have drastically reduced the chances of getting that. Now, honestly... At this particular stage in my career, the two most important things to me are your health and my reputation. And they're tied together. So I do nothing to jeopardize either one of those. And in fact, I have told people I'd rather not start than start thinking I had less than an optimum shot at that. Now that being said, there are questions I think people should ask themselves when they go to any type of a doctor. First of all being, are you supposed to be healthy? I mean, it seems like a simple question, but, you know, if I ask people, do you think you're supposed to be healthy? I'm surprised at how many people really, they'd say yes, but they don't believe that that's possible. Well, yeah, but I can't be because of whatever excuse, or I can't because of this or that or the other thing. You know, I think you're supposed to be healthy with no excuses to it. Should you have to learn to live with it? Man, I wish I had a buck every time I heard that one. <laughs> Oh, Doc, I've got this, but I've learned to live with it. Or, I, you know, I've done this, or I take that every day, or I do this. You know, well, that's something you can't help. I have to learn to live with it. Wish I had a buck every time I heard that. Uh, but I don't buy that one either. Should two-thirds of all Americans have to take drugs for the rest of their life? Hmm. I used to say half until I saw a study that came out right over here. From the Mayo Clinic proceedings, this was last year, uh, mid-last year, uh, incredible from Mayo Clinic. Overall, 68.1% of the population in this nation is on a prescription of medication. 60, more than two thirds. We are the most drug society in the history of the human race. We take more drugs in this nation than most of the rest of the world combined. Now, for all those drugs, are we the healthiest nation in the world? Well, that's easy. <laughs> uh, a study recently came out, U.S. Health in an International Perspective, and this is from the National Research Council on the Institutes of Medicine, and look at the title that they gave it, Shorter Lives, Poor Health. That's their title. And here is the opening paragraph. The United States is among the wealthiest nations in the world, but it is far from the healthiest. For many years, Americans have been dying at younger ages than people in almost all other high-income countries. This health disadvantage prevails, even though the U.S. spends far more per person on health care than any other nation. $2.7 trillion last year is what we spent. The entire world spends over, a little over six. That means we spend about half of what the world spends. Almost twice per man, woman, and child, the next highest nation. Yet according to the last, uh, last report that I saw from the World Health Organization, 38th on the list of healthy nations. Pretty far down the line. We take more drugs than everybody else. We take 85% of the psychotropic drugs in this world. The drugs for you know depression, for anxiety, and all the mood drugs that they now have. 85% because we're obviously 85% crazier than the rest of the world. Maybe. Right? And I was blown away by this stat that came out just recently, um, January of last year, so a year ago. A study came out, 68 other nations 
If you are born in one of 68 other nations, you have a better chance of surviving the first day than the United States. We are 69th on the list of infant survival on the first day. Cuba and Paraguay are ahead of us. <laughs> so we spend more money, we take more drugs, we're living longer, living sicker, we're the second highest in chronic, well, we're the first highest in chronic illness, second highest in quite a few other things. I mean, so there's obviously a problem. It's not money. It's we're obviously got a problem with how we take care of our health, what we do about it, how we look at it. So I have a good question here. Would you like to be healthier a year from now? That's an easy one. Everybody says, of course. You know, I mean, today is uh, what February the uh, 20th, 18th. I'm off by two days. <laughs> February the 18th, 2014. Would you like to be healthier by February the 18th, 2015? I've never had anybody say, nah, I'm good with being sicker next year. Yeah, count me in for being worse. No, everybody wants to be healthier. Hang on to that one. I'm going to come back to it. 